All right, guys and gals, this video is on making the Gen 1 jig. Now, uh, if you've been around the channel for a while, you know that uh, for years I've been making a jig called the Gen 3. And, uh, you know, the Gen 3 is great if you have a wood shop, but I've decided that uh, maybe it's uh, a good idea to go back in time now. This is the original jig that my dad used. And, uh, you know, it's, it's quite a bit different than what we're going to build today. Uh, but in a way, it's uh, a lot the same. Now, the, the Gen 3 I was talking about, uh, you know, the, the advantage with that was, you know, you've got dowels instead of nails. And it's a little safer to, you know, be around kids and whatever. But the, uh, the bottom line is, is it, it's not that easy to build, especially if you're using hardwood. Um, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to build, uh, the Gen 1. Now, my dad had these little, uh, drapery cord clamps here, which, uh, didn't work that great. And, uh, we're going to substitute those with our, our clamps. All right. And, uh, the important thing to remember here is, is that, you know, this was probably the hardest part to make. You can see how narrow his uh, were, and then my copper spinner was a lot bigger. But the trouble with all of the copper spinners is they're very difficult to make, you know, and they're expensive. You have to buy a whole uh, whole coil full of uh, copper, so uh, that's why I came up with the 3D printed spinner, and I sell a kit on eBay for ten dollars that includes shipping and the kit is going to include everything you're going to need except the uh the wood uh, i'm not going to include the wood you're going to have to buy that and you're also going to have to buy these clamps too but what you are going to get that's going to save you uh quite a bit of money is you're going to get the spinners uh which is going to make your life a lot easier than making them out of copper you're going to get these Craig screws that are meant to go through softwood, pine, and then you're going to get these uh, 4D nails. Uh, if you were to go out and buy a box of everything you needed as far as the uh, nails and the screws, well, it would, it would be uh, uh, a lot higher cost for you. So that's the whole purpose of me selling you the kit is to make it easy on you guys. So uh, just go up on eBay and, and look for the... Uh, the Pompano Brownie Gen 1 uh, 3D Spinner Kit. You'll see it up there. If you just search eBay for Pompano Brownie, you'll find it. Uh, and, and while we're talking about uh, eBay, I, I do want to mention again that these Gen 3s, you know, I've made hundreds of these over the years. And um, this last batch of 71 is almost half sold. And after they're gone, that's it. You guys will be flying solo, making these kits yourself, and that's a good thing. You know, it's a great project. Great project for a, a, uh, a kid to learn how to make this and learn how to tie his own pompano rig. So, anyways, uh, enough talk about that. Let's, uh, let's get on with making this. You know, when you go to the store, you're going to have to buy a, uh, a piece of 1x4, okay? And 1x4 is actually three and a half inches wide, which is perfect. You know, that's what we need is three and a half inches wide. And it'll be three quarter inches thick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're gonna cut it 11 inches long, the same length as a piece of paper. And uh, it's already gonna be three and a half inches wide. And the next step is to, you know, follow our directions now. If you, uh, you know, stop the video here, you can look at this all day long if you want. And it's got everything you need. Uh, I'll also uh, include this piece of paper with the instructions with that kit. So uh, don't worry about that. If you order the kit, you'll have this and you don't have to stare at your uh, computer screen for an hour trying to write things down or uh, build it out in the shop with a computer. So, uh, so anyways, let's... To get going here, this uh, 11 inch piece, you cut that, uh, you know, and what I recommend is, is, you know, buy yourself a, a, a piece long enough where you can make 
two or three of these jigs for your uh, your fishing buddies or relatives. But uh, once you get that, follow these directions here. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to mark out an inch and a half deep, and uh, these little strips here are three quarter inches wide. Okay, and it's really critical that you make sure that this is an only an inch and a half in depth. And the reason that's important is, is our spinner is about an inch and seven eighths long. And this won't even work right if you don't have this an inch and a half depth. Now, these not being perfectly three quarter inches wide won't make that much difference, but stay as close as you can. The other measurement that's really important is to measure a half an inch from the edge of your board to where your uh, your nail is going to go. That's super important because uh, those two measurements are critical for all of this to work right. If for some reason you didn't have enough space, your spinner wouldn't be able to spin properly. So uh, enough said about that. The other area that you're going to have to mark is from the top down, you're going to have to mark down eight and a half inches. And that is going to be a... Uh, where you're going to put your screws to hold in your clamps. Now I do tell you in the instructions to drill uh, pilot holes for making the Craig screws go in easier, but that's the only two places you want to drill your pilot holes with that 3 32nd uh, pilot hole. Now it is a Craig screw and it will go in without any pilot holes, so that's really not necessary, but it's just going to make your life easier. As far as the rest, do not drill pilot holes for these nails uh, that are going to go in. And let's show you the rest of the measurements on the board. The other two marks we're going to have to make are uh, for the size of the loops. Now, I rarely use this uh, short loop, but you may want to. So, and that's the way uh, my dad had them. If you look at the original, he definitely has, you know, one for a short loop and one for a uh, longer loop. You can see even had it marked here for the short loop. I usually use the long loop, but anyways, uh, and once again, remember, do not drill pilot holes for the uh, nails anywhere. The only time we have the pilot holes are gonna be for the Craig screws. So the next thing we have to do is we're gonna have to cut out this. You know, let's make sure that when we use our saw, we uh, try to stay on the inside of that pencil line and that way uh, the kerf won't make this any skinnier. If we make this too skinny and we go to drive a nail in, you know, we take the chance of this splitting and we don't want that. So uh, go ahead and uh, use what you need to get this done. Now, I've got a jigsaw, but you know, you may uh, not have that and you need to buy one. Well, you could save some money by buying uh, this coping saw. I'm going to have a link for the uh, coping saw in the video if you decide to buy one of those. These are like nine bucks. Are they a little harder to use than uh, a jigsaw? Well, yeah, but uh, you take less chance of hurting yourself. So what I'm going to show you is a video on me cutting this with the uh, with a coping saw because that's a uh, you know, that's the whole idea of the video. Let's make this more affordable uh, versus the Gen 3. When we get all done uh, while we're talking about the Gen 3, when you go to use this, the instructions for using the Gen 1 are the same as the Gen 3. So just search my Pompano Brownie videos for using the Gen 3 and you'll be good to go. It's not going to be any different using it. So let's go ahead and get this cut out. Just take your time and stay on the inside of that line. Keep blowing it off so you can see what you're doing. And I think for the sake of uh, making the video shorter, we'll speed this up.
All right, that wasn't too bad. Uh, you can see I used a C-clamp to hold it down. It'll probably make it easier if you have one of those. If you have a Harbor Freight nearby, they sell them pretty cheap. But uh, if not, you can just hold it and uh, it'll stay put for you. Now what we have to do is we've got to get uh, some pilot holes drilled on the sides for these uh, Craig screws that we're going to put in. And remember, that's a 3 seconds uh, inch pilot hole. That Craig screw is only uh, an inch deep, so you only have to go uh, an inch. If you go here more, it won't hurt anything. So let's go ahead and get that done. Try to stay right in the middle of your board. Uh, you may find it easier if you take a, a nail or a prick punch and give yourself a little head start on this. Uh, it'll be a little easier here, but uh, go ahead and keep it right in the middle and go slow on the start. Go slow. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and put in our clamps. Like I said, I, I get these at Walmart these mini clamps, and they're cheap enough, but uh, when I ship you guys at Gen 1 kit, if I have it too thick, I can't get the cheap postage. That's why I'm having you not only buy those, but to uh, buy the pine. But uh, And the other reason I use uh, Craig screws is these actually have holes in them. You'll see the little dimples in the rubber. And if you use a screw that's bigger than that, uh, it won't go through, so these Craig screws uh, work out nicely. Now, you do have to have uh, a number two square bit to use these, and um, I highly recommend uh, just getting one of those screwdrivers that have uh, different bits you can put in there and uh, do this by hand. You don't want to use a uh, any type of an impact driver or whatever. But let's go ahead and get these on. Now I'm going to put these in with uh, one of these magnetic screwdrivers and that uh, that bit that'll fit the Craig. Now, if you happen to have a quarter inch nut driver, you could just tape the bit, you know, to a quarter inch nut driver if uh, you had one of those kicking around. But uh, these screwdrivers are handy. Usually they they come with several bits. Uh, may not come with a number two square head, but if you can find one on uh, Amazon, I will show you a link for one of these screwdrivers and that number two bit. But uh, let's go ahead and put these clamps on. Like I said, you're going to be able to put that through first through that hole in there. And then we're going to Go ahead and uh, lay it on its side, it'll be easier. And remember, this is pine. Do not over tighten it. You're, you're just going to snug it. You go too far, and then you're going to find that you strip the screw out, and you're going to have to uh, jam some toothpicks in the hole with a little bit of wood glue, let it dry, and then start over and try again. But just get it snug, you know. Use your fingertips to tighten it. You don't need it really tight. Okay, that's all you need. And a little tip, too. When you're using the jig, uh, always make sure that your clamp is even with the top of the board. You can see i got a little bit of space here, and it's going to be easier to use it if you make sure it's at the top. Let's get the other side in. That one gave me a little trouble getting it through the hole, but uh, it'll go. And like I said, keep it on its side. It'll be easier. That's where these pilot holes are going to make it a lot easier. And don't sweat it. If you go to drill those pilot holes and you're not perfectly centered, uh, once again, don't over tighten this. Okay, and that's a little too loose. Let's give it a little more snug. That's good. 
Uh, yeah, if you're not perfectly centered, that's another beauty of the uh, pilot hole is, is you know, it's, it's not going to split on you. So, all right, so we've got these in. Just got to get our nails in. Let's get that started. All right, the clamps are in, and uh, what I want to tell you here is pretty important, too, as far as putting your nails in. Uh, before you put them in, uh, you're going to take some uh, diagonal cutting pliers like this. And you're going to cut the heads off because if we don't cut the heads off, uh, when you get to pull your monofilament off, it's going to give you too much resistance because the head of the nail is a lot thicker. They'll drive in fine. And the other reason uh, we're taking that head off is, is we're going to sand this so there's no burrs before we nail them in. And after we nail them in, we're going to take a sandpaper and a file if you have one and make sure they're nice and smooth, no burrs. Because if you have a burr after clipping, what it's gonna do is put a nick in your mono, and uh, that's bad news. You don't wanna lose a fish over a nick in your mono, so that's important. So when you clip off this head, you're gonna stay right close to the head, okay? You know, I mean, give yourself an eighth of an inch or whatever, but that's it the most, okay? and. Cut it, so make sure it's perpendicular to the cutting line. And then uh, have your safety glasses on, and when you get a cut, face it away from you because that head is going to go flying. And anybody around you should have safety glasses on too. Okay, and you'll feel it. There's burrs on there. So uh, we'll cut all four off, and then we'll, uh, we'll show you how I go about sanding them. You can see that, you know, I'm not... Uh, leaving much nail there when I'm cutting these off. So don't, uh, don't allow too much space. I like to use uh, 100 grit when I do this. And uh, like I say, this is a lot easier to do. If you were to nail these in and then cut them, you know, you'd have to handle the whole board. So just uh, take these and start running them back and forth, keep turning it. And keep working them and feeling it until all your all your burrs are gone, and then get the top of the nail too. Now, if you have a, a file, well, that's even easier. You know, you can you can use that and just keep working it, feeling it. You you want to make sure you don't feel any burrs. Once you're burr free, you can nail them in, and then you're going to have to. Uh, Double check after nailing them, sometimes it'll peen over the edge and you're going to have to touch these up with sandpaper again. But let's uh, assume we've got these done and let's nail these in. All right, so we got our starters and we've clipped our nails. Let's go ahead and tap them in. Go slow. You want to keep checking. Make sure you haven't gone up. I can feel it. I went to the bottom. I'm going to give that a tap. And, you know, you can see I, I put this in a little crooked, but that's not a big deal. I can take and I can bend that. And what you want is uh, you want them perpendicular to the board. So, and that's not a big deal. And then we'll go ahead and put the rest in. If you bend it a little bit, it'll go back. Oh, there we're through. Just give that a tap. Let's bend it up. Make sure it's perpendicular to the board. All right. It's a little harder to nail them without the head. You can actually support it with your finger if you have to. All right, and we're through. Let's give that a tap. You can see with that little dot's coming through there. All right. All right, 
as long as it's flush. You know, more nail and we're, we're done here. I'm gonna try supporting that while I'm hitting it. Okay, we went through, let's tap it back. And you can see where, if you're not careful, if you don't, you know, creep up on it, uh, you can see where it, it started to split just a little bit. So, uh, you know, that, that's key. Just sneak up on it. These are 4Ds, and uh, they'll be fine, but, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't go all the way through. It, it may be more beneficial to do this uh, on top of a concrete floor surface or something like that, and that way you know you're not going to go through. And then the last thing we got to do is we got to make sure that we check all these nails for perpendicular and we got to touch them up, make sure there's no burrs, go around, uh, use your sandpaper, whatever you have to do, and get rid of all that. Nailing may have caused a few problems. See that nails off a little bit. And you know, and work at it. Keep feeling them, you know, get them perfect. All right, we're, uh, we're on the home stretch. The other thing I give you in the kit, I forgot to tell you about, you know, I, I give you the nails, I give you the Craig screws, uh, I give you the 3D printed spinners, uh, but I also give you a small screw here and I give you a snap swivel. And the whole purpose of that is to uh, put your spinners on there when you're done tying your rigs and you won't lose them. Uh, you know, if you lose them or whatever, uh, don't worry, we got more for you. But uh, now I will say that this is a screw and I would, uh, you know, just keep it centered and I don't know, I got a go up, uh, maybe an inch and a half or so uh, from the top. And I will do a pilot hole on this just to make the screw easier. Put this through the end of our snap swivel. And tighten this down so you can still swivel this around and get it out of the way so it doesn't interfere when you're tying your pompano rigs. And the only other thing I would suggest is, uh, you know, Double check for burrs on the bottom and uh, sand them off or knock it back with a hammer. And you may want to write uh, Pompano Brownie on YouTube on the bottom of this because, you know, long after you're gone, if one of your grandkids finds it and they have no idea what it's for, uh, he's going to know to, or she's going to know to go up to the internet and uh, go to the Pompano Brownie YouTube channel and uh, you can even uh, write on there using the Gen 3. We could immortalize my dad forever with these things kicking around the country. And, and that's it. You know, you've got yourself the Gen 1. Is it going to work as good as the Gen 3? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to love it. It's small enough to store easily. And we can put our... Uh, our spinners on here for safekeeping. Like I said, just go up to um, eBay and look for the uh, the Pompano Brownie uh, 3D Spinner Gen 1 kit. And uh, I give you two of these with that, so I could have clipped on both of them. But you know, that's going to do it. You've got uh, you've got an original. Gen 1, just like my dad used to use, and uh, you'll save a lot of money, you'll have a lot of fun, and there is nothing better, I can tell you, than catching any fish on your own rigs. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I appreciate all of you subscribers out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and that's going to do it for this video.